Unity Atlanta. Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Easter and Namaste. The spirit in me truly welcomes, honors, rejoices in the spirit in you. And let us begin this Easter Sunday morning as we do all things with prayer. I invite you wherever you are 
to find a comfortable, prayerful place or position. And let us pray together as a virtual beloved community this Easter Sunday morning. Today, this Easter Sunday, is a day of new beginnings, a day of fresh starts, a day of renewed life, and a day of resurrected spirit. As we feel the sweetness, as we feel the awe, as we feel the presence of God's ever abiding grace, enfolding us now, we know that we are rising from the death of any crucifixions we may have experienced in our lives. As we remain centered in faith, centered in the consciousness of our hearts, we rise beyond fear and failure we rise beyond pain and anger. We rise beyond lack and limitation. Today, on this Easter Sunday, we and all things are being made new. And with overflowing gratitude for all which is becoming new in our lives now, we rejoice knowing that we are blessed always and we are blessed eternally beyond all measure. And together, as beloved virtual community, wherever we may be, let us say, thank you, God. Wherever you are in this moment, would you say that with me? Thank you, God. Amen. And as is our practice, as we love to do every Sunday, we have an affirmation for our week to lead us on paths that are prosperous and powerful and protected. As we celebrate this Easter Sunday, let us affirm the affirmation for this week together. Remember, it's always posted on our social media on Monday morning and you can carry it with you throughout the week, affirming and knowing this as a truth in your life. So we affirm for this Easter Sunday, today I rejoice in the gift of new life. I am free to begin again, and in grace I arise. And so it is, and so we claim it and know it as the truth. And we're so delighted wherever you're tuning in this morning on this Easter Sunday, we're so delighted to have you with us as part of the virtual beloved community that is Unity Atlanta in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. And we are so grateful that you chose this Sunday morning to celebrate this wondrous day with us. And so let us know together on this day as we know every day, that power and presence of God as we affirm our statement of faith. Together we affirm there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God the good omnipotence. And so it is and so we claim it as the truth. And let us move deeper into an understanding and experience a feeling of that as we share together in this reading of the daily word. This daily word for today is taken from Easter 1956. And the daily word for today is Easter. And our affirmation is I feel the spirit of Easter and feel the resurrecting power of God in every part of my life. The scripture for this reading comes from the gospel according to the writer John from chapter 11, verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. 
And the reading for this Easter Sunday says, the spirit of Easter is the spirit of faith. It is the spirit of joy. It is the spirit of victory. It is the spirit of resurrection. It is the spirit of grace. I enter into the spirit of Easter. I feel the spirit of Easter as I think about life and faith, joy and victory. As I think about what the word resurrection means to me and about the grace I find in my own life. At Easter, I rejoice in the resurrecting power of God that is at work in me and in my life. I think of the growth that I have made, of the overcomings that have been mine. I look at the green new world about me and I feel as alive as any greening tree, as urgent with growth and newness as the pushing blade of grass. At Easter, I feel a new and resurrecting spirit. I feel that I am on an upward path. I know that the old ways need not bind me, that the past cannot hold me. I partake of the spirit of Easter. I rise in spirit and in faith. I am resurrected into a new consciousness of life today. Again, the daily word for today is Easter. And the affirmation is, I feel the spirit of Easter and feel the resurrecting power of God in every part of my life. And so it is. And so now as we prepare for a beautiful time of meditation, we invite you to be comfortable in whatever way feels best for you as Simon Needle prepares us for this beautiful time with a selection called Hope Eternal.
And so as we move into this sacred time of meditation, a time of guided meditation, I invite you again to be comfortable in whatever way feels best for you. Breathing deeply. Breathing in that breath of God that lives and moves and has its being in us. We breathe deeply, feeling that presence of God moving into every vein, every cell, every fiber, every artery, every limb, every organ of our being. That renewing, that resurrecting power of the breath of God flowing in us now. In these moments, as we take this time to do as that master teacher Jesus did and to rest a while, we feel the power of that divine breath within us. We breathe that breath, knowing that this breath of God fills us, renews us, restores us, and resurrects us. Filling our bodies, filling our minds, Filling the spirit within us. We breathe that breath, breathing it in, breathing it out, enjoying the company of loved ones in the room with us at this moment, or our furry friends, whoever they are, sitting beside us. We breathe that breath of God in these beautiful moments of meditation, knowing that that breath already is lifting up others who follow in our presence on this Easter Sunday, we rest in the presence of God and embrace a few moments now in the silence.
these moments of silence. We feel the presence of God as a renewing, restoring, resurrecting presence. We remember in other moments throughout this day, throughout this week, how sacred those moments of silence are to remind us of the ever-renewing, restoring, resurrecting power of God in the midst of our lives. Wherever we go, no matter what we may be doing, no matter who we are, we are this day uplifted in the love and light of God's eternal grace, and we are truly grateful. And so it is, and so we know it as the truth of our being. Amen. A reading from the Gospel by the writer called Matthew, from chapter 28, titled, He Has Risen. When the Sabbath ended at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Suddenly, they felt the earthquake, and an angel of the Lord appeared there, rolled away the stone, and sat on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning and its clothes were white as snow. The guards beside the tomb trembled in fear and fainted. But the angel said to the women, Do not fear, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said he would. Come, see the place where he was. Then go quickly and share the news. He has risen from the dead, and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Look, so you believe what I have told you. When they saw the empty tomb, they hurried away in awe and rejoiced, running to spread the news of this glorious wonder. In awe and wonder. They ran to spread the glorious news that Jesus, the one who had been crucified, was not there, but had risen. He had risen. And how did this happen? And how is that possible? And they were in awe. And they wondered. And it was an angel of God that came to bring them those wondrous tidings 
of great joy that they were to tell all the world that he has risen. And here we are on this Easter Sunday, this day that is supposed to be filled with beauty and glorious rays of sunshine and chocolate bunnies and Easter eggs and strawberry pie and brunch and big family photos all gathered around the dining room table. That isn't happening this Easter. And for some of us, there is that moment where perhaps we are alone. Perhaps it's just a few of us that the virtual congregating is wearing a little bit thin. And some of us would like to get past this time, which seems now as if it has been weeks and weeks and weeks, which it pretty much has. And yet it is Easter on the calendar. And the beauty of Easter that I invite us, I encourage us, to consider in this time of April 2020 is to move our sights to lift them up beyond that experience of the Easter Sunday brunch and the running around with the family and the hunting for eggs on the lawn and a lot of those other so-called traditions that have always made Easter a great event. Because this year, on Easter Sunday of 2020, in this moment, we are invited, we are encouraged to lift our sights beyond the event of Easter to the experience of Easter and what it means to realize resurrection. And this is easier said than done in a very busy world where we can be virtually anywhere, any place, anytime, 24-7, pretty much as much as we were running around all over town in crowds. Remember crowds? Getting caught in traffic. Remember traffic? And here's the gift in the experience of Easter. For those of us who ordinarily would like to go from that wonderful time of Maundy Thursday right into today, we still need to take all the steps. And you know, we like sometimes to bypass that part, oh, you know, we're not gonna talk about the resurrection, oh no, Good Friday, no. Nah. Passion, ugh, nothing passionate about that. Ugh. Let's just go Thursday to Sunday. And a last life, as you blessed viewer may have noticed, does not work like that. And neither does the story of Easter. And so I invite us, I encourage us to consider the power that is in the resurrection experience what makes it all possible? Saturday. Saturday is what makes Easter Sunday possible. Because there was the nice daily gathering, the Lord's Supper, the Seder of Thursday, and then there was the crucifixion, and it was, ugh, and, and Jesus died. And because it was Friday and the sun was going down, that body was taken by people who loved him and placed in a tomb because it was going to be the Sabbath, which was Saturday. 
And so the body could not be buried until Sunday. And the body was placed in the tomb as the story goes, and there were guards set there. Interesting, they thought they needed guards for a dead man. And then everybody went away, and it was the Sabbath. And no work was to be done. And it is on that day, that Saturday, the day in the tomb, that makes the resurrection possible. And for those of you who are working this spiritual practice, these Unity New Thought teachings with us and have been doing it for many years, you know I'm on to something. And for those of you just tuning in this morning, we know we are all gathered by divine appointment and this Easter Sunday especially is such a rich reminder of the mystical, metaphysical teachings where there's that moment of, oh, like, how did this happen, you know? And we want to get very intellectual about it. <gasps> well, you know, I mean, the shrouds could have slipped off, and, you know, we're opening books, and we're Googling. Uh-uh. This is the Sunday of all our Sundays. When we get to remember how powerful it is, yes, how uncomfortable it is to rest on Saturday in the tomb, wrapped in the shroud of whatever is occurring. And I like to imagine that there are many of us who have had our own Saturday experiences of having to rest in a tomb. And if we look at these teachings mystically and metaphysically, let's consider the thing that is the proverbial death, the end of the road, that gets us to that place where we have experienced a horrible divorce or a horrible illness or a job loss, which many of our brothers and sisters are experiencing right now, where we have had troubles, arguments, so powerful they have left us on the ground. Bankruptcy, devastation. A loss so great that we are at the bottom of the bottom and we look at the curb and go, the curb looks better than I do in this moment. And it is that moment when we get to step into, we get to lie down in and wrap ourselves up in the tomb and wait for Sunday, the day when we are to arise, the day of our resurrection. And that is where our power lies to sit and to wait and to rest, to be there often by ourselves with some fear, with some doubt. And this is the thing about Saturday. We don't know what happened in that tomb. Because the story is the Matthew writer and the other gospel writers tell us has no conversation about Saturday. Our Saturday is our alone time to be renewed, to be restored. It's our time to remember that there is something beyond what we are experiencing here. 
And I would love to stand up here and tell you on this Easter Sunday morning that I know what Jesus was thinking or doing, and I can't. And no one can because Jesus did not leave us any journals to tell us how stinky, crummy, rotten it felt. Though I could do a big gathering, maybe we'll Zoom about this sometime, about when we've had those moments in our own tomb. And yet there is still something that helps us arise, that lifts us up, even when we believe that we have reached the bottom of the bottom. The thing that is in the tomb, the thing that we talk about so much, we even sing it is, love is all you need, except there's something else. There's love. And then there's the love that comes from God's grace. The grace that we understand is like an invisibility cloak we are born with the second we appear. The grace of God that says you are loved so much that even when you think you've reached a bottom, I still got you. The grace is there around us when we are ready to lift ourselves up, when we are ready to live life anew. And this grace is for everyone. There is nothing we ever need do to believe that we are worthy of it, or we are deserving of it, it is God's gift. And on Saturday, in the tomb, when no one is there, God's grace is at work. Preparing this one we call the way shower to show us another way. It is in these moments, these moments right now, I'd love to tell you that at midnight tonight, this will all be over and we will all be healed and the world will go back to normal, whatever that normal is going to be. And I regret that I can't. And yet the gift for us is that our Saturday, this Saturday experience that we are having as a world community is giving us incredible opportunities for grace, for continued moments of renewal, and of resurrection so that we don't wallow in the this Easter is not like all the other Easter's but that we rise up into the Easter experience which lifts us up beyond just this day into new ways of thinking new ways of living new ways of being and new ways of serving one another in ways that Jesus is that master teacher, that divine way shower taught. And so, beloved community, on this Easter Sunday, I invite you to feel the power of God's grace in your own life to look about you wherever you are with your loved ones, your kitties, your puppies, your garden, your goldfish, your Easter eggs and chocolate bunnies, and reflect on how beautiful your life is in this moment. 
this Easter Sunday, already even though we cannot see it, please know with assurance that that presence of wonder, that awe of Sunday is already at hand. That the Easter experience that we are enjoying is one that each and every one of us shares together. There is wonder and there is awe in all the ways we each are being called to rise up to be resurrected from whatever has seemed like a crucifixion in our lives and to claim that gorgeous power that is the presence of God with us and within us always and in all ways. This Easter, may you realize that awesome power of God in the midst of you, in the midst of your life. May you feel that glorious cloak of grace. And may you know, beloved virtual community, that you are whole, that you are holy, and that you are rising to glorious and wondrous new heights. I love you. Happy Easter. Namaste. Well, hello. How did you? We thought you weren't coming. Oh my goodness, it's Easter and the bunnies here. The Easter bunnies. Are we six feet? Okay, you got your mask. Of course you've got your mask. And you brought us an Easter egg. That is a beautiful Easter egg. It would not be Easter here at Unity Atlanta with our beloved community if we did not have our beloved bunny. And so we know in that power and presence of God that miracles can happen, that love prevails that all things are being made new and we can rejoice in the wonder of Easter. Happy Easter, Bunny. Namaste. Happy Easter, Bunny. All right. So grateful for the Easter Bunny. But really so grateful for the grace of God and for the opportunity every day to begin anew and arise and rejoice. Also, we're very, very grateful for you, for everyone who keeps sending in their donations, giving by text, through the website, mailing in your checks. So incredibly grateful. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prosperity consciousness. So let's take our offering in our hands. Hold it close to your heart if that feels right to you. And let's say our offering affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and increases all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I have. I give in love because I am love and I love to give. So it is. Thank you, God. Amen.
Thank you, Cam Austin, John Ivey, Johnny Barrett, Simon Needle, the Tower of Higher Power Band. Here comes the sun. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for the gifts that bless this ministry. We are so grateful that we get to be together virtually and rejoice in the power of beloved community. We are so grateful for the gifts that you share with us that allow us to be here to invite us thank you for allowing us into your homes your living rooms your studies your lanai's wherever you are viewing with us this easter sunday morning we say thank you we are so grateful we're so grateful for the resurrecting spirit within each of us, wherever we may be, that is bringing to us greater sunshine and a greater experience. I am so grateful to be with you this Sunday morning for our beloved team that brings this service together. I invite you to join me now as we move into the rest of this day with our prayer for protection. Feel that, breathe that in, and let us know together that power in this prayer that went all the way to the moon, and let us see it healing, uplifting, and resurrecting us to new heights. Together, let us affirm the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And so it is. And so we let it be. Happy Easter, beloved community. We love you. Namaste.